Hi there, this is Scott from softwarearchitect.ca and today I wanted to put this little video together to talk about Big O Notation. Now Big O Notation is a concept that is measuring the performance of an algorithm. It is a measure of how an algorithm scales as the amount of data that it has to deal with increases. So an example is that if you've got an array, let's say a simple array of a thousand items and then that array has to grow to 10,000 items or 100,000 items, it's quite possible that your algorithm just goes longer and longer um, in time until it, it becomes unmanageable. Uh, I worked at a company many years ago that was importing records from uh, t thousands of external retail locations and collating them together and inserting them into the database and we got to the point where this process grew over time such that it was taking 24 hours in a day to run this job to import all these records and sort them and then you know check to see if there's there's duplicates and all these things and so obviously there was a problem with the exponential nature of adding more data uh, we were able to to um, optimize that get that down such that it was running within four or five hours and it wasn't going to be much longer more of an uh, a sequential linear progression from that point. So let's talk about big O notation. Again, it's just a way of, of representing the, the scaling and the time it would take to run certain arrays. So there's uh, some concepts we'll talk about in this video. First one is called O1. Now O1 is the simplest um, expression of O notation. It is basically, if we go down here, oops, not to this one, go down here, you can see here that O1 means that uh, no matter how big the array is, it always runs at a constant time. It doesn't matter how much time that is. It could be a minute, could be an hour, could be five hours. As long as no matter how much data it's dealing with, it runs in that exact same time every time, then that could be called an O1 uh, process or an O1 algorithm. So this example is just taking in an array I have created an array here of 20,000 items for test and they all have random numbers in them. But in this O1 example, I am setting the first element of the array to one. And in this instance, this, no matter how big the array is, the uh, algorithm will run in exactly the same amount of time, 10,000, 20,000, a million, 10 million. It's going to be constant time. And so that's what O1 means. Okay. The next thing that you're likely to encounter is called ON. Now ON is, is a constant or a, uh, a linear expression of time. N is the number of items in your array. So if your array contains a thousand items, then N represents a thousand. If it contains a hundred thousand items, then N represents a hundred thousand. In this uh, example, we're going to loop through the entire length of the array and we're going to reset the value from whatever it was to the index. This is just an example. But we expect if this uh, array contains 20,000 items that this is going to take 20,000 loops through this for loop and when we complete this it's going to say it was complete in 20,000 steps. That's my expectation and it's a, f a fairly reasonable one. That is a linear expression of time O n. The next time you'll uh, likely see it is something like O n squared. Now this is not a good performance. This is that exponential uh, thing that I was talking about in my previous example, which is you've got nested loops, okay, in this example. And so you're going to go traverse the length of an array and then in a loop inside that loop, you're also going to traverse possibly the entire array looking for something. Okay, so no matter what you're doing in here, if you have to traverse it once and then for each element traverse it, let's say you're trying to find it if there's any matches, looking for duplicates. Okay, that's an expensive array. That is going to have scaling problems when you're dealing with millions of records that could take hours and days to run, etc. So I'm expecting when I run this that the N2 completion is going to be some uh, 20,000 to the power of two. It's not going to match it exactly because I'm my inner loop um, stops at the at the value of the outer loop, but we still call that n, n to the power of two. 
this is really usually the worst case scenario um, expression. So it doesn't matter if you've got an if statement in here and once you find the value, you quit or something like that. There's some uh, things that you can do that, that might cut your loop short, but that's not you're not taking that into account uh, in your uh, calculation of your performance. It really is uh, what is the worst case scenario if, if random nature is against you and you're looking for a number and that number doesn't exist and all of these worst case scenarios, the edge cases, what is the performance of that array? Of that algorithm. Uh, the last one I'll talk about here is called log n. Now this uh, to me and to other people I guess the log part is not something you encounter on everyday uh, life. Okay so uh, if, you know we learned about this in high school, we learned about this in math class, but essentially a logarithm is the um, when you take 2 to the power of x um, that's the value that get, you know, if we say log n, 2 to the power of x equals n. And so we're expecting, it's, it's basically um, less than n. It's always going to be less than n generally. So the bigger uh, the value of n, x does increase, but not as rapidly as n increases, okay? So in this uh, example, I picked a random number. And I'm going to be looking through my array of 20,000 items looking for that number. And so this is a binary sort operation. Okay, I am, because the uh, array, I'm assuming the array is sorted in this, in this instance. And I'll show you uh, up here. I sort the array before I call the login function. Um, so, I, so if the array is sorted, then I can do a binary search and I basically can find a number and depending if it's lower, you know, less than or greater than the number that I discover, I keep splitting the array in half. And this is going to complete in a lot less um, loops than, than 20,000. So if I run this, I hit a 5. And what we have is 01 completed in 1. That's exactly what we expect. And no matter how big the array, 20,000, 40,000, 60,000, 01 will always complete in 1. ON completed in 20,000 steps. Again, uh, as you increase that to 20,000, 40,000, 60,000, that number will increase linearly. N to the 2 completed in, let me quickly, it looks like um, 199 million steps. And so, you know, this is not exactly uh, 20,000 to the power of 2, but again, it's a representation of how expensive having a loop within a loop is if you're traversing the array in both loops. Uh, we sorted the array, so this is a repeat, but then o -N, uh, log n only took 13 steps to complete. So you're taking a, an array of 20,000, cutting it in half to 10,000, cutting it in half to 5,000, cutting it in half to 2,500. You did that 13 times and then we found the number we were looking for. And so you can see here uh, the relative performance of these algorithms. Now we're not talking seconds or milliseconds, although there's a relationship, but um, we are talking about how an algorithm scales. This has been Scott from Software Architect, and this is a basic example of big O notation. Thanks.